We have been traveling the rich lands of East Africa, far and wide, across the highlands and lowlands of this beautiful region, talking to farmers wherever we go. We have given them the help and knowledge they need to improve their farming methods, increase their income, and turn their farms into good business for the future. Join us and our experts on this journey across East Africa and share the family's experiences as they make these changes. Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We are in Kambia Moto, Rongai, Nakuru County. It's hot, it's dry. We're about to meet some farmers and see how they overcome some of these challenges. So let's go, let's go, let's go! go. <laughs> Gideon and Alice live with their children in Campiamoto on their three acre farm. They grow sorghum and sweet potatoes and have local chickens and different types of cattle. We set up tent and sat down with Gideon and Alice to see how we could shape up their shamba. Gideon and Alice, it's very nice to be here in Kambiamoto and we thank you for welcoming us here. Now Gideon, how long have you lived here? Nearly 18 years. 18 years? Yes. And you've been a farmer all through? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. What are you growing? I'm growing sorghum and keeping cows. How is your sorghum doing? My sorghum is doing very well, but Birds come and eat them, ah. destroy them. So majority of your harvest is going to the birds? Most of it. Gideon, how many cows do you have? I have 14 cows. 14? Yes. How many liters of milk do you get? The one which produces more milk produces 8 liters. Yes. But the least one which produces less milk is 2 liters. 2 liters? Yes. Is that good? It's not good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're not happy? I'm not happy. You, you don't look happy. And do you help him farm? I do, on the side of chicken. What do you farm? I do plant sweet potatoes. Right. So are they doing well, the chickens, the sweet potatoes, are they doing well? On the side of chicken, mm -hmm. I do face a lot of challenges. Right. But on the side of sweet potatoes, yes. they are doing excellent. All yeah. that have not expounded to the large scale. Gideon and Alice, we're here, Shamba Shepard is here, and we have with us experts. Okay. They will talk to you, we we'll see what you can do about your cows, yes. see whether you can increase the yield to more liters. Yes. we we'll have a look at the sorghum, your chickens, and the sweet potatoes. Yeah. Hmm? Let's get to work. Gideon is currently growing sorghum, but there is a good reason he should be growing even more. Jacob from East African Breweries came to tell us why. Why should a farmer grow sorghum in these areas? Well, uh, this area is uh, relatively dry. Uh, other crops will not uh, perform very well. So sorghum as a drought tolerant crop will do well in this kind of uh, climate. By planting sorghum here, what benefits yes. does yes. a farmer get? I, I would advise Gideon and uh, other farmers around here to to get involved in uh, sorghum growing for EABL market. We are going to buy all white sorghum in, in this country and we offer competitive prices. How much sorghum do you need in a year as EABL? Our projection for next year is uh, around 45,000 metric tons. And how much do you have now? As of now, we were able, this is when we were able to get only 10,000 metric tons. So there's still a lot this, that you need? Yes, there's still a big gap. Gideon. Did you hear that from yes, the expert? Yes, yes, they I need understand. more sorghum from you. Yes. What problems do farmers go through in this area when they are growing sorghums? Which are the main problems that they face? The problem, one of them is uh, birds, the other one is uh, seed availability, uh -huh. and the other one is uh, now access to market. Gideon, where do you get your seeds to plant? Always we have been using seeds. We we plant, then we store some to be the seeds. So recycle and the same, we, same we, seeds? We recycle the seeds. Is that advisable? Uh, that is not uh, very advisable. You'll find that if a seed is recycled several years, then pro its productivity goes down. 
A farmer should only plant certified seeds, which are available in EABL offices and at accredited agents across the country. EABL will only buy gadam or sila sorghum. Now, when you're buying sorghum from the farmers, do you come to the farm directly or how should the farmer get access to your market? Well, uh, if it's a large-scale large, large scale grower, a person delivering more than a truck, he can, he'll get a contract with us and deliver direct to Nairobi. A small-scale farmer like Gideon should work in a cluster group. Together, they can produce a large amount of sorghum to sell to the breweries. As a sorghum farmer, what guarantees yes. can you give him? We guarantee ready market, we guarantee prices. So once he plants, he knows it's ready market for his product. Yeah, and he knows the price that he, that sorghum is going to be sold at. So, let's get planting. The first thing is we measure the, the length there eh, of the planting sticks. Dig shallow furrows, 75 centimeters apart. Dig planting holes, 5 centimeters deep and 20 centimeters apart on each furrow. Add two seeds per hole. Add a bottle cup of DAP to each hole and cover with soil. You will need three to four kilos of certified seed per acre. Meanwhile, I decided to have a look at Alice's chickens. We brought in an expert to help Alice increase production from her local layers. At one time, Alice had 60 chickens, but they all died suddenly. I asked a Kenchik expert why. So, Peter, what do you think killed the chickens? The most probable cause could have been hygiene or an outbreak of a viral disease. What exactly do you mean by hygiene? The feed should be placed in a clean place. Also, there should be no contamination with the, the dust, uh, the, the droppings from this bird, and also the water. It should be, we say, it should be potable water because it serves as a, as a source of infection. The chicken house, I also noted, also is a lot of uh, open spaces which can bring in draft, and this will cause the chicks maybe also to come down with uh, pneumonia and such infections. So the house should be well built to ensure that the birds are protected from strong wheat and also from draft. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's talk about the breed. Alice here has the local breed. Yeah. Is that good for them? Yeah, a local breed is good, especially for this environment. But we also need to take care of it well so that it can give us good returns. It's a good breed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's recommended? It's recommended. Sometimes it's better to buy older chicks as day old chicks can be a lot of work if you're not used to them. We'll bring Ali some three-month-old chicks which have already been vaccinated and don't need any heat. I wondered what we could do to improve Alice's chicken house, so I asked Ruth from Unga to have a look. When you look at it, it has ventilation, yes, it has the laying side, yes, but you have not factored in uh, predators, okay. you have not factored in uh, safety of your birds. Okay. So what we need to do is to upgrade the house and we don't need to blaze it up. Blazing it up is increasing cost. Oh really? We can use the floor. And actually when the bird sleeps on the floor, it mm -hmm. makes its own bed. It's like a mattress, right. which makes it warm at night. Okay. And what about the laying, the place for laying? It's open, mm -hmm. a predator can eat the eggs. So how should it be? It's supposed to be closed and dark, so that when uh, a bird is inside laying the egg, mm -hmm. it's not supposed to be seen by the other one. Okay. Because mm -hmm. when it's seen, it can develop 
a, a vice called cannibalism. This means that the chickens attack and eat each other, even their own eggs. What about feeding? What do you feed your chickens with? I just use maize. Just maize? And then soga. So you don't do any supplementation? Sometimes when I have money. So it's on and off. Mm -hmm. So when you're not supplementing, mm -hmm. the birds are not getting all the nutrients that is, are needed to produce. Okay. And uh, fertility rate will be low. Alice has 10 layers at the moment. If fed correctly, each chicken should lay one egg each day. When you hatch your chicks, how do you feed them? How do you make sure they start life strong? I would recommend you feed with fugo chicken dark mash, which will give them strength and a very good frame. And actually when it has a good frame and good health, it will give the chicks immunity. You are recommended to feed that for eight weeks. Then after that, you go to growers. Growers, you can give half of the growers and half of your feed what you can afford on the farm. Now when they start laying, right. we go to Fugo, layer smash. We do the same. We do supplementation 50%, 50%. You can feed local chickens 70 grams of layer smash and 70 grams of maize or sorghum each day. Socceries and our team set to work to build Alice a better house for her new Canbro flock. Lazy Tony, what are you doing? Uh, learning so much about sorghum, how about you? Working. We have been working very hard on the chicken shed. Uh -huh. Now, now, hey, now, did you know that uh, the ideal growing temperature for sorghum is 25 degrees to 30 centigrade with a minimum of 15? Now me, now me, there'll be more right after the break. With a minimum of 15 degrees and the rainfall, now me. Oh, come on, now what are you doing? Soaking my feet. This is not for soaking feet. Well, I thought you bought it for me to be soaking my feet no, in. No, this is for storing sweet potatoes. What? Oh, come on, you'll find out later. Sweet potatoes? Stored in a basin? Better find out more about this. Alice, tell us, do you grow sweet potatoes? Yes, I do. Have you ever heard of orange fleshed sweet potatoes. Not yet. This is my first time. You are hearing it from me? Yeah. You see, I'm very helpful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I brought for you an expert who is going to explain to you what is OFSP. Sami, take it away. Now, Alice, you have just dug this from your shamba. Yes. Now, this is the one I brought today. You can see the difference in color of the flesh. Now, this one means that it is rich in vitamin A. So Sami, you'd recommend that she plants the orange one. Why? Why is that, apart from the vitamins? Well, apart from the vitamins, um, you can use it in making other products, baked products like bread, chapati, or even cakes, okay. uh, which are more nutritious for the young children. It's a good source of vitamin A. For the pregnant mothers who require a lot of vitamin A, this is cheaper source. Now, Alice, do you get a lot of rainfall around here? No, since the semi had it earlier. So, Sami, with unpredictable rains, how can a farmer prepare to plant OFSP? Well, you have to make sure that you have your planting material ready when rain starts. What are these planting materials? You must have this ready so that when it starts falling, you have something to plant. I can see you brought for me a bucket to wash my feet in. Where is the soap and towel? No, 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 no. You can use this to preserve roots after harvesting. You select medium-sized roots, medium-sized roots, yes. that you can store in the sand. What do you call that system? Well, we call it triple S. There is storage in the sand, and then the sprouting of the roots to give the planting material. Because if you just store them in the open, they'll get, they'll get rotten mm -hmm. and you throw them away. 
When you are selecting your roots to store, make sure you select small and medium roots of good quality. You can use any old container as long as it doesn't have holes where pests might get in. Put newspaper on the bottom of the bucket. Arrange the sweet potatoes and cover with a layer of sand. Then repeat the process. Depending on the size of the bucket, you should be able to store two to three layers of potatoes. The final layer of sand should cover the roots by five centimeters. Remember to use dry, cool sand. Do not use water. Store the bucket in a cool, dry place, away from pests and direct sunlight. And remember not to take roots that are damaged. Because if you take the roots that are damaged, it is easy to rot, right? And other pests and pathogens will enter in and destroy you. Four to six weeks before the rains come, remove your sweet potatoes from storage and plant them in the ground on their side. They will sprout and you can use the new vines as planting material. Remember if you have 40 medium sized roots, roots. Yeah, you are able to generate 1,500 cuttings. Your roots will give you plenty of vines which you can use for planting. Take 30 centimeters long cuttings from the top of the vine and plant them at the start of the rains. Thank you so much, Sami. Alice, I'm sure you're willing to try this. It's right now. Oh, right now. <laughs> Not to, tomorrow. <laughs> today, today. today. Okay, thank you so much, Sami. Instead of leaving your sweet potatoes in the ground, put them in a bucket with sand so you are ready to plant when the rains come. It turns out Gideon could be managing his pasture better to improve the fodder for his cows. Paul from the Ministry of Agriculture came to tell us how. So Gideon, tell us, uh, what breed are your cows? For now, uh, yeah. they are mixed breed. Uh -huh. oh, Boran, right. uh, Saiwal, there is a Cebu, uh -huh. and crossbreed of Asia and Prussian. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, and how much milk do they produce? The cow which produces more milk is eight liters, and the least one is uh -huh. two liters. Right, is that a good thing, Paul? No, that's not enough. I think with these animals, you can get more than uh, 20 liters per, per cow, yeah, depending on uh, the feeding legume that he'll uh, feed the animals. Right. He can get up to even 25 liters. 25 liters? Yes, he can get 25 liters from uh, the animals he has. So what is proper feeding? Uh, for, for proper milk uh, production, you need to give a lot of uh, uh, feed containing proteins so that the animals can uh, be able to give you more milk. Protein is the bodybuilding part of the feed, the nutrients. It's also important in the production of milk. For example, now which one? Now from uh, the green glass you can get protein oh, right. when you can get the green uh, vegetation. But when the, uh, the vegetation is uh, dry, right. you need to add, to provide that component that's available from the green plants. And uh, you do that by providing uh, other nutrients like uh, soy, fish meal, they have high value protein. Is it advisable to keep many cows of different breeds? No, it's not advisable. You should keep two, three, four animals of uh, appropriate breed like Aisha, Jassy, Olgansi. These are animals that don't require a lot of feeds, but they give a lot of milk. So what happens to the other cows? You should sell them and maybe buy two or three good uh, ah. animals. Tony and I asked another expert, Emmanuel from Ilri, how this might be done. Emmanuel, I mean the, the, the pasture around us, is it good for the cattle? The pasture that we have here is not good for his cattle. Simply because it has a lot of weed, if you look around where the uh, cows are grazing. And there's uh, all these sorts of weed, there's acacia, there's these other natural weeds. And it needs to be cleared for uh, the cattle to get uh, best from the uh, pasture that he has. He can also improve on uh, the quality by over sowing. This is the process of introducing a high yielding variety such as uh, rose grass, which is good for the energy requirement and protein requirement for the cattle. Gideon, what do you feed your cows? I feed on this natural grass. Now Emmanuel, do you think the other kind of feed that he can give to his cows from the shamba? 
definitely when you look around his uh, shamba, there's much, much more that can be done to utilize whatever feeds he has available within his shamba. There's a plot of uh, sweet potato vines, and uh, that's very good in uh, provision of uh, proteins to the cows, some maize stovers. That can be also be used to supplement uh, whatever the cows are getting from uh, grazing. So how does a farmer prepare the feed? The practice that he's uh, doing right now, like leaving the cows to go and graze in the, in the fields where the stovers are, is uh, inappropriate because uh, the cows will just trample on the maize stovers and then the maize stovers will be exposed to soiling, they'll be exposed to termites and then the harsh weather conditions. The best thing he can do is uh, harvest the, 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 the maize stovers, preferably chop them using a chaff cutter and then store them. Then during the dry season, like we are right now, I, that, that feed, the, the stored feed will be available for the cattle. Must a farmer use the chaff cutter? If you don't have access to a chaff cutter, you can chop the stovers by hand into very small pieces for better storage and better digestion. When that, the, the feed is processed, it uh, reduces that wastage by 50%. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, faster, 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 Slowly. Oh. Faster, faster again. Faster, 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 faster. Come on. Oh. So simple. Why didn't I think of this before? Always wear a mask when chopping. Meanwhile, Caris and our team finished off the new chicken house. What do you think? Oh, it's a wonderful house. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, but mud. And it, your, your chickens can lay eggs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And look. Safety. Safety. Mm -hmm. And what else? Mm, light is enough. Light is enough. I'm very happy. How happy? Show me. So happy. So give me half my Wow. Happy. Yes. yes. <laughs> Remember to keep the chicken house clean. Now it needs good ventilation, security from predators, and a good dark place for the chickens to lay their eggs. So we got them new three months old chickens from Kenchik. And now they can move into their new house. So Gideon and Alice, we've come to the end of our stay here. Alice, tell us, what was your experience? I've learned to know to improve my chicken and I will breed them to a large scale. Aha, great. Gideon, you're not smiling. Are you not happy? I'm happy. <laughs> I've learned about the bosha, how to improve the cows, uh -huh. and also how to plant the, the sorghum. Yes. I think I'll, I'll do a lot. It's been another great show here in Campia Moto. It was time for us to go. Our work here was done. We'll see you next time on Shamba Shepherd. Shepherd.